Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the functions and relationship between glucagon and insulin. Um, so the pancreas has what are called the pancreatic islets or the islets of Langerhans, uh, which are endocrine islands of cells in an ocean of exocrine cells. So the majority of the pancreas is made up of cells that have exocrine function, meaning that they secrete substances into tubes instead of secreting hormones into the blood. Um, so it's mostly exocrine tissue with islands of endocrine cells that are scattered around. So those are called the pancreatic islets. There are four different kinds of cells that are included in those pancreatic islets. Uh, the alpha cells secrete glucagon, the beta cells secrete insulin, the delta cells secrete a hormone called somatostatin, which inhibits the alpha and beta cells, and then F cells that are that secrete pancreatic polypeptide, uh, which is a hormone that acts on the exocrine portion of the pancreas to regulate those functions and those secretions. So in this video, I'm going to focus on glucagon and insulin, the secretions of the alpha and beta cells. Um, so to sum it all up as succinctly as possible, when we have low blood glucose, we secrete glucagon to counteract it. And when we have high blood glucose, we secrete insulin, insulin to counteract it. Um, so we have the two hormones that are working in balance to help keep our blood glucose within our homeostatic range. So when we get too far towards either end of our homeostatic range, we would secrete one or the other hormone to draw it back in. Um, so glucagon is secreted when blood glucose is low. It is a catabolic hormone, which means it's a hormone that stimulates the breakdown of things in the body to produce energy, um, to produce energy, or sometimes there are other functions of catabolic hormones. But in this case, it is to make more blood glucose available because blood glucose has gotten too low. Um, another time when glucagon is secreted is when we are in fight or flight. So during a sympathetic state, uh, we would secrete glucagon because when we're in fight or flight, the goal is to mobilize all of our available resources to supply um, our bodies with the energy that we need to get through that situation. So if we have to fight a bear or run away or whatever it is that we have to do, having more sugar available to use to supply that exercise or that activity is going to be really useful. Um, so the effects of glucagon, when we secrete it, when blood glucose is low, it promotes the breakdown of glycogen into glucose. So glycogen is our stored form of glucose. We store glycogen in the liver and in our skeletal muscle. So when our blood glucose is low, glucagon goes and starts the breakdown of glycogen so that we can release that stored form of glucose into the blood to increase our blood glucose. It also pr uh, promotes a process called gluconeogenesis, which if we break that down, gluco as in glucose, Neo as in new, genesis as in creation of. Uh, so it promotes gluconeogenesis, so formation of new glucose from other substances like certain amino acids and, and other things. So both are mechanisms to increase blood glucose when it's low. Then the opposite is insulin. So that's our hormone that we secrete when our blood glucose is high. So insulin is an anabolic hormone, which would mean any hormone that stimulates protein synthesis and muscle growth. Okay, so catabolic hormones are ones that stimulate things that break down, and anabolic hormones are ones that stimulate the building up of, so the opposite. Um, so insulin is also secreted in a parasympathetic state, so our rest and digest state. And it makes sense because insulin is helping to feed our cells. It's part of uh, what we do when we're absorbing nutrients through digestion, which we do in a parasympathetic state. We need insulin to counteract all of the sugar that we're absorbing when we absorb our nutrients. So it makes sense that we would secrete additional insulin um, when we're absorbing nutrients, and then also it stimulates protein synthesis and muscle growth, which are activities that we do in a restful state, not when we're in fight or flight. Um, so insulin, first step is that insulin signals the cells, mostly muscle cells, but other types of cells too, uh, to take up glucose from the blood. 
So insulin is the signal to those cells that it's time to eat, that there's glucose in the blood that's available and that the cell should take that glucose up and use it for its own fuel. Once the cells are fed and there's excess uh, glucose still available in the blood, the next step is that insulin promotes the formation of glycogen from that excess glucose. So just like how glucagon just broke down the glycogen to get the glucose back out, insulin is what forms the glycogen in the first place. So it takes that extra glucose and forms glycogen, so the stored form of glucose, which is stored in the liver and the skeletal muscle. Then let's say we have more glucose remaining. So now all of our glycogen stores are also filled and we still have more glucose than we need. Then insulin is going to promote the synthesis of fatty acids. So we will actually convert that glucose into fatty acids and those fatty acids can be used by cells as needed and mostly they're taken up by adipocytes so our fat tissue cells. Um, so when we have glucose in excess beyond what the cells need and beyond what we can fill our glycogen stores with, beyond that, it essentially gets stored as fat. Um, but insulin also promotes uptake of amino acids by cells and protein metabolism. Um, so insulin has an important anabolic effect. So insulin is helping cells to take up the energy they need to do all the jobs that they need to do. And it helps them take up amino acids, the building blocks of proteins, so that the cells can also produce more proteins and repair their structure or whatever they need to do with it. Um, insulin also inhibits gluconeogenesis because we don't need to make more glucose since we already have an abundant amount. And it also inhibits breakdown of fat in adipose tissue um, because it's the opposite. Insulin is, is promoting storage of more of these things and it's inhibiting the breakdown of that fat to be released and used for energy. So um, when it comes to what we should eat and how that stimulates or inhibits our insulin, um, if we want to gain body mass, whether that be muscle or fat or whatever else, I don't know who's really trying to gain fat, but whoever's trying to build more muscle mass needs to eat in such a way that you're producing insulin throughout the day. So that means including carbohydrates throughout the day. So if somebody's trying to build muscle, it's really hard to do on a very low carb diet um, because on a very low carb diet, your the goal is essentially to reduce the amount of insulin that you're secreting throughout the day. So when you do that, it kind of interferes with your muscle's ability to take up amino acids, to have all the glucose it needs for to be fully energized. Um, and to be able to build more muscle tissue. It's the opposite of somebody who's trying to lose weight. Um, so if somebody is trying to lose weight, the goal should be to eat in such a way that the insulin is staying low and steady throughout the day. That's also the case if somebody has diabetes mellitus, type two, of course, type one is a different story. But if somebody has type two diabetes mellitus, then you also wanna eat in such a way that you're keeping insulin steady, um, and lower than, you know, you don't want to have big roller coaster and have your insulin going way up high in both cases. Um, so that's why we have to eat in a way that supports our goals. So there's no certain, there's only, there's no specific style of eating or diet that works for everybody for every goal, because it depends on the individual and your current health status and and what your body responds to, but it also is very important that you're considering what your goal is. So if you wanna build muscle, I don't recommend a very low carb diet. And if you want to lose body fat, then a low carb diet might work for you because then you're keeping your insulin low. That's also why if a diabetic is taking insulin injections, um, when somebody first starts them, they tend to gain a little bit of weight. And if they increase dose, they tend to gain more weight as you increase the dose. And that's because insulin is triggering uh, storage of fat and adipose tissue. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.